weekend so far. My weekend has been eventful, to say the least, but it's not over yet. The, I think whenever we stream X-Wing on the weekend, the weekend's only just beginning because the best starts with X-Wing, obviously, and that's what we're doing today. we got two games of X-Wing today. We've got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We've got some Worlds Prep lists in here. We've got some Battle Over Endor for game two. Um, so uh, excited to have you all with us. Hello, Lan Bolo and friends. Thank you all for being here. Um, let's see, what else? I'm seeing Dune uh, Part 2 early tonight with a couple of our 312 locals. Super excited about that. The reviews are coming in, and it, the, apparently it's very, 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 very good, which I was expecting. Uh, the Chicago Cubs signed Cody Bellinger today, which is awesome. So and for, for those who don't know anything about baseball, he was one of their, he was their best player last year on a prove it deal and they brought him back for three years 80 million dollars super excited about that spring training is starting so i'm excited to be able to distract myself with some baseball worlds is coming up and i'm wearing the world's shirt very comfortable i have mine in black there are a couple other colors including navy blue you guys see as well is the back I kind of stand up a little bit there you go world's 2020 world's 2024 yeah uh Bellinger was awesome for the Cubs last season. He's a good dude, and it seems like he belongs in Chicago now. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm um, excited to have him back. Let's get over to X-Wing, though. We don't have to talk about the Cubs exclusively. That would be terrible for most of you who could give a shit. Um, besides me. It must be nice to be a Dodgers fan, by the way, because y'all y'all just do not stop spending money. I just hope it actually pans out. Can't buy a championship. You can try. Uh, I'll open up betting. It's Empire versus Empire here for our first game. It's Skepionic versus Michael Shively. Uh, Shively is captain of the five straight boosts, but this is not a draft league game. That Those games are not official until next week. We'll talk about draft league in a moment. I got some work to do prepping for streaming a lot of draft league games for you all for Nickel City X-Wing. Shout out to Greg and NCX for season five of the draft league. I am also playing in it, not a captain, but as a player, for the Mega Milk Union. So shout out to the MMU. So uh, betting is open. Let's get our bets in. Remember, you can use your credits that you get from betting to redeem some awesome stuff. I'm adding a bunch of more things you can redeem on screen, some memes, all that good stuff. We've got SSP Vader. He's got the hate ion missiles and afterburners. Merrick Steel with fire control shield upgrade. This list is gonna be very familiar to some of you because this is my list. Uh, Mauler, Mythal with the Predator, Afterburners, Battle of Yavin, Style, Backstabber, Battle of Yavin, Style, Crackshot, Discipline, and Afterburners, and then SSP, Tomax, rather SL, Tomax. True Grit, Plasma Torpedoes, and Ion Bombs. On the right side, Shively bringing his own Flavor of Empire with the same Vader. We've got SSP Vader, the best Vader in my humble opinion, the most flexible. He's got his own Merrick, but this one a little different. We've got Ruthless Marksmanship Shield Upgrade, so no fire control. Uh, he does have Palpatine to help him out a little bit here if he needs to. Countdown, a good piece featured in a uh, playoff game recently. Rob Pettit, a, a teammate of Shively for the Team League, bringing Countdown with the Marksmanship BT1. Shield upgrade. We've got Vizier with Palpatine crew for that force spend. And then uh, rounding out the list, we got an Obsidian. So five ship list here featuring a generic at I2 in the TIE Fighter. So those are your lists. We are playing a salvage mission. I don't believe I have that. Oh, it is updated for us. That's awesome. I think I forgot to update it, but because the last game we did was salvage, it looks like I did it correctly. So awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. We are getting set up here. Got, got through the list very quickly. So other announcements. Uh, the Sith Taker Open just just happened. Go to our full screen really quick. Just for a second, I'll bring you back to the overlay in a moment. You can get your bets in again. That'll be on, going on for another 13 minutes, so you got plenty of time to bet. Uh, Sith Taker Open just happened. So I'm working on getting a bonus uh, interview with a couple of the players who made Top Cut from that. So and I have more information on that. I will share it with you all. Might do a sub only um, stream, maybe just do it for everybody here on uh, Twitch um, and then put it on the podcast as a bonus episode for those that miss it. And eventually it'll go on YouTube. So working on that interview right now. Um, let's see what else. Uh, tomorrow is Monday. First first day opening day of the draft league and we're streaming opening day. We've got two games of draft league 
uh, for Monday, slated right now. So jump in 312 and watch a couple of the first games of season five of the NCX Draft League right here. I will be playing the next day, I believe game one right now, although I have to figure out my schedule with that on NCX, and then we'll be streaming uh, more Draft League on Wednesday. So um, look for us to be doing a lot of that. Then on Sunday of next week, the end of the week, Saturday and Sunday, we have three games, up to three games, of the championships for the 312 Team League. So we will decide a victor of the first inaugural season of the Team League uh, by the end of the weekend. So we will be streaming Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, X-Wing. So uh, if you can't say that you, you, you never catch our streams, we'll be doing a lot of it. So looking forward to it. Is this game one or two? Uh, this is, I mean, th these are both, you know, uh, casual practice games, but this is game one. He just started streaming a few minutes ago. And our dials are being set. Uh, Shively's list is built for salvage. Epi is bringing this, probably bringing this to Worlds, the LCQ. So, you know, both lists, though, are, are pretty good at, at salvage. You're, you're wondering, oh, how, how could, you know, SL, Tomax, and the boys, the boys will be willing to pick up crates. They, they can do it. Um, SL, Tomax is a little bit more iffy. I think maybe in the mid or end game, he can pick one up. Vader doesn't mind picking one up. Uh, and, and Merrick can certainly pick one up. He doesn't have afterburners, so he doesn't care that much about picking one up. So both sides have three or four solid crate carriers. I mean, honestly, uh, you could pick up one with every single one of um, Michael's ships because he has the ailerons for Vizier and Countdown. The downside of Michael's list is the punchiness is not so much there. Hey, Mappy, thank you so much for the resub. That is a nine months at a one month streak right on. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. We do have some sub goals uh, just to keep them up, just, you know, give more goodies, more things to give away. And I believe we are about ready to go. Here we are. I will start the time. The Vizier, Elrond's in banking. Or maybe just, is he just, I think he just did the, the three. I might have missed his Elrond's either way. That's where he is. <laughs> that's where he is. Obsidian going fast. Taking an evade. So we're going to want to grab that center crate, but I wouldn't be surprised if Vader says, not so fast, my friend. Ailrons and three bank there as well for countdown. Not a lot of shields in this list for either side, really. You have you have Merrick Vader on both sides with the shields. Vizier has them as well. So technically there are more shields and countdown with one more shields on the side of Shively. Here come the boys, just focusing. I typically don't recommend using your afterburners in the first turn unless you really can pounce on something, but I that opportunity doesn't ar arise as much as you'd think. So Sa save them for the mid game. Save them for you know the second and third engagements. Those are the when you want to use them. And we're uh, taking a lock on an obstacle. There we go. Yeah, use use your fancy lock there. We've got our Tomax Bren. Target lock. I'm going to make sure that I am. I am not a spectator right now. There we go. They're seeing my hand move all over the place, you know? It's not good. Now they can't anymore. All right, what did you all do this weekend? Hit me with it. Give me with the chat. Come on, let's go. I want to see more than just betting. I'm, I'm happy to see betting, but let's go. Come on. Talk to me. Somebody say something. There's Mappy with something. For the Sith Taker event, I was surprised there were two sh two four ship lists in the top four and one in the top two. Yeah, the the Ray Poe list. So yeah, Sith Taker Open was interesting because it was like a very it was a very massive turnout, which is awesome. Uh, but it wasn't official. There was like no world's invite or anything give it away. Um, and so I think that actually allowed people to bring some of the stuff that they really wanted to bring that was a little bit more fun. 
and then some folks brought some good stuff that people didn't think was that good that is good yeah yeah a lot of players excuse me sneeze time <coughs> Ooh, sneezing So SSP Vader on the flank. That's Merrick in the middle. So interesting. Vader is rolling with the boys right now. So he's kind of kind of leaving Merrick up, up to his own devices in the middle of the board. We could see Merrick one straight and and claim. Somebody's definitely claiming at the bottom. We, we probably have every single uh, salvage taken here unless Vader goes faster than a one speed at the top. Shively's Vader. We'll see. So we're setting our dials for round two. About to start getting a lot of scoring here. I mean, it would be tempting to just like four or five straight with Merrick and target lock that obsidian, try to get a snag a couple of points and then figure it out later. The, 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 the downside with that is that you could be taking two to three shots. You have you have the health to sustain a couple shots. But you don't you know, you, you gotta you gotta rely on some average greens. The work week was rough. You're just chilling mostly and you deserve it. Yeah, for sure. I haven't even eaten yet. So I, after after these games, I am going to scarf down some food before I go see the movie. Actually, technically, I have eaten. I have this blueberry fi Trader Joe's like fig bar. That's my breakfast. I'm seeing it Friday. Awesome. Very, very hyped. We're all hyped. I'd imagine Vizier's going to end up coordinating Merrick of Focus. So it was the first one is really good, but for people that aren't into the world or who aren't like compelled by the characters it's really slow like once arrakis once the 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 spaceport kind of gets attacked you know and paul paul goes off on his own it's uh, a little slow but it's it's just a beautiful movie and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it Yeah, this this one, I think there's going to be a lot more action for sure. All right, I think we we have a couple more dials to set. Slowly but surely and don't call me Shirley. The other thing that um, you're going to need to be really mindful of if you're Daniel is um, this ion missile potential from Vader. If he's if he goes out there and takes a lock. Vader will not only try to ionize him, but he'll, you know, he'll knock off the lock if he does. All right, first player goes to Daniel, which is a very important turn. So about half of Shively's list is going to move first. <laughs> so 
So we Aileron and then uh, Sloop, it looks like. Or we one harding. Sloofing. Oh, the question is who you coordinate. Doing countdown? Yeah, neither did I, to be honest. I didn't know anything about Dune either. And I didn't know anything about Lord of the Rings until I saw the movies. I think that's actually a, a perfectly acceptable way to be introduced into a world because movies are very accessible and they, you know, they're visual stor stories. So very reasonable. But yeah, the, the, I, I watched parts of the, oh gosh, I don't know, what is, maybe a hard turn from Countdown or just going straight? Um, I don't know what I was saying. I was talking about Dune. Yeah, I knew nothing about that world. And then I saw the movie and I was like, ooh, this is nice. Oh, turning away and taking a crate. So Vader's certainly not doing a too hard. He's probably doing a three bank. And he's hiding behind that rock, which is smart. And I think Countdown is next. I think I'm wondering if Shively, maybe the barrel roll puts Countdown in an awkward spot or not. He still can, it can still ail Ron. <laughs> is going to do so. And just go one straight. And take a crate. So Countdown, a little vulnerable here. Even though you have that ability, you can only use it once to gain the stress to take a damage. And Merrick does slow roll, which I think is the right call. And, oh, we're going to barrel roll. Okay, not taking a crate. Going to get some distance from Vader. And the boys are going to start banking in. They are going to use afterburners here. The only thing is, it's just a little awkward with that rock. We are going to do it. We're going to burners. This looks like Mauler. I apologize. The colors are off, by the way. This is Mauler. So Mauler is actually blue. Let's fix that. Stabber is red. Whoop. Boom. Do I have the colors right for... Yeah. So it looks like the one hard though will fit. I think both both of them can one. Yeah, both of them can one hard next turn. That's actually not a bad position for either of them to be in. The boys, um, so not not bad. Um, so you probably you probably do. You you do. Oh, you have to barrel roll too. You just move the lock over. This could be a good turn for Skeppy here. So uh, is a, is a, it could be also an equally good turn in terms of crates as three of them are on Michael's side right now. But he is opting to run away with with uh, with Merrick. At least for a turn. A very interesting Vader hard turning. You'd probably just take a crate then, just so you have something on your side to score a point with. Yeah, he's going to do it. 
It's going for it. It's going for it. Obvious doesn't mean bad because you can't block backstabbers one hard, so. Here comes Vader. Don't know if he could fit the boost straight. It doesn't doesn't look like it would fit. The countdown survive. The countdown's at a bad spot. Um, Vizier could coordinate countdown though. Um, I, assuming countdown loses the crate, otherwise you can't can't coordinate countdown a barrel roll. Countdown getting shot three times. I don't know in terms of bullseyes. We can take a quick little sneak peek here. Bullseye is in for backstabber, and it looks definitely out for Mauler. Mauler will have range one. So you probably, unfortunately, I think I think until Max is the first to shoot, he just fires a plasma and tries to force that countdown ability, and then you lay into him. Um, Vader can only lock uh, Mauler. It's a bit of an awkward spot for Vader to be, unless he barrel rolls here, which might be the move he is going to do that. Nice. Sets up a three bank burners for next turn if he wants. Okay, so three objectives on on Shively's side, one on Daniel's side, on Skeppy's side. A whole lot of no shots for Shively, though, and a lot of shots, three shots for Skeppy. So we are going to start with the Plasma Torpedo. Just three dice, three on two. Palpatine is active for Shively. And going to have to spend the lock. Not the best roll starting off. Hope for hoping for three. You get hit crit. So the, there is a crit in there, but just remember to hit crits canceled first. And going to have to spend Palpatine. Or do we use Countdown's ability here? Takes the shield. Remember, crits are canceled first when you're firing a plasma torpedo. So now Mauler's going to have to be the one to get Countdown to spend the uh, use that ability. Oh, did oh he did gain the stress? Never mind, never mind. He used uh, he used Countdown's ability already. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, he decided to keep Palpatine. Wow, that's a full string. See you later, crate. Goodness gracious, countdown is gone. See ya. I was I'm surprised that he, he used the ability right away. I'm so I'm very surprised by that because this is the shot that you wanted to use the ability on and now you're dead. Oh, man, what a shot there. Mahler Mythal. That's the battle. That's that's the power of the boys. Two shots into this game and we have a dead countdown. Good time for betting to be closed, Jesus. So not doesn't have to worry about the debris when you're dead. Countdown ends ends up being overkilled, and now you can just take a shot into Vizier, range three with crack shot active. It is obstructed, so three on three. Uh, Ripper Rooney, just one. Just keep your crack shot. I don't think you, uh, yeah. You don't crack it. That's fine. You, you, you're you pretty thrilled with what you just ha got. So can't be mad. Pretty good. Don't I, I got to be honest, I, I like countdown's ability. But I do not like countdown in this archetype. I think I think it's better the for the. For the eight points, I don't know.
for the eight points you could you could go for two other four pointers you could go for juno you could do you could do juno shield upgrade just that that gives you another i5 i get so here's the things that i do like about countdown though obviously the ability um i obviously uh, i also really like uh the ailerons because you can grab a crate and still you know be able you can still boost because it's not an action to do that ailerons boost um yeah it's just if you're only shooting a countdown once or twice it's a little discouraging but when you can focus fire it's it's a two agility uh I took the crate as an action that turn right so it also didn't have any tokens to back up the defensive roles just palpatine so it's 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 a little bit of a toss up when you're taking a couple shots, but three shots. But yeah, needed to. I think if Michael does it goes back and does would have done this again. You you take because the the plasma cancels the crit first. Maybe he he forgot that he that wasn't the case. I'm not gonna speak for him, obviously. You uh you just spend Palpatine to take the one, and then you on Mahler's shot you spend your you use the ability to take the stress take one more damage then you're on three hole against backstabber and it's a little bit more of a toss-up although backstabber does have the focus and crack shot but you're at least on three hole and it's obstructed or at least i thought or maybe it wasn't obstructed it probably actually wasn't no closest point so it would have been three on two with crack shot it's, it's a tough tough situation to be in either way so i'm not sure if it ended up mattering that much So, planning for turn three. There are now only three three dice guns, and both of them require target locks to get the third die. Two of the three, rather. So, uh, we might see. I'm curious what Merrick ends up doing here on Skeppy's side. Uh, looks like a three bank is a little iffy. You could fit, definitely fit the two bank, but then you're in Vader's way. You could too hard and then barrel roll, focus barrel roll and claim a crate the next turn. I actually like that move a lot. It's more passive, but it would force Vader to go out of his way to go after Merrick. And he's got so much health, you wouldn't be able to kill him. And then uh, Daniel's Vader, you probably just do something like a three straight. Don't go too fast. The ties are each going to one hard um, because Stabber is going to be in the back. It might not be a bad idea to grab a crate with him. You're only going to go straight the next turn anyways. You're not going to need to afterburners. And we're just taking evades here. That plasma torpedo from from Tomax is very scary going against Vizier. And we're probably going to see the barrel roll here for the double modded plasma. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, you go all the way back. You might be clipping that debris next turn. Yeah, you will be. Um, I think it's worth it. It's okay. You just you just won two bank, probably. Maybe you take a damage. It's all right. Linking it to the stress for the lock. Getting the focus from the ability. And here are the hard turns. Taking a focus, remember later has has him locked. So now do you do you oh you might not be able to go straight. Uh ooh, that is that is not looking great. So you might bank. That's still okay. Um, but we take a crate there. I think that makes sense. And Merrick does bank. Okay, so we know Vader's not doing anything faster than a two. Unless he decides the barrel roll in front of a rock, he's not gonna do that. So Take a lock out there on Vader and threaten him, though, for sure. There it is. Yeah, that's that's a lot of shots into Vader, potentially four shots. I don't know if Daniel is going to be able to get close enough to Vader to lock him, though. We'll, we'll have to see. And a K turn there for Merrick. 
And he does block himself. Not good. How fast did he go? Three? Yeah, Vader went three straight. And we'll have to roll for the damage. I think a two would have gotten in the lock range. Wait, what? Uh, what are you guys doing? Um, and in evade his activation, he can drop the crate, right? Oh, that's where you're okay. Got it. I thought you like rolled the damage and dropped the crate. Sorry, that makes oh, more no. sense. Okay, that makes sense. I've just, I think I just never see people do that. So I was like, what are you doing? I thought he doesn't want the crate. So he's gonna jettison it. Um, don't know if he rolled for damage yet. Oh boy, so right now you're in bullseye uh, range two from Mauler and Backstabber's got a shot on you. Merrick is going to have range two right now. On, uh, on Vader. All right, checking for the lock. We're going to move it, probably. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Try to knock that crate off Stabber. Uh, so range two, no, uh, no lock. But you still get two. Trying to get some damage, chipping in to Vader, chipping away, chipping away. Two Vades. Not, th not this time. Not today, Satan. All right, range three and a stabber here. Try to get sink some a crit or two in here. Knock off the crate stabber, no tokens. Spend the lock on the blank. There you go, a full string of two hits and a crit. Spending, I think a force probably, yeah. Stabber is taking hit crit and we'll lose the crate. It was worth a shot to, to take it. And we'll see what the crit ends up being. It is a uh, wounded, I think. A stunned. Who cares? Don't be bad at the game. All right, here we go with a plasma torpedo here. If you get if you get three, you're guaranteed to get two damage, uh, two shields and a damage card in to Vizier. So this will be the, the last Plasma Torpedo. Something that's a little scary for Tomax is that Merrick can uh, three straight lock next turn. Oh, so two blanks. Uh, spend the lock you got for a reason. Here's the, This is the Plasma Torpedo from Bren. Oh my god. That's uh, not going to hit. And he rolls the natural evade for added insult to injury. Ah, that really blows. That's that's a, a very below average roll. Stabber range three. Let's see if we can get lucky with the natties. Hey, there it is. Three hits. Can we get Vader to lose his force? Vader rolls three natural evades. Jesus Christ. I think Shively likes playing on a stream. He tends to have some good attack dice. Uh, uh, right now, he's getting some good defense. Uh, this is range two here from Mahler. Uh, you have oh, yeah, Predator active for a reroll. And uh, the dice are starting to fail Daniel right now a bit. One hit. Vader rolls two evades. He hasn't rolled a blank yet. Actually, maybe he's rolled one, but he's rolled. Yeah, it didn't matter. 
Yeah, this is some horrific dice here. Let's see if Merrick can get something better. Uh, gonna have to spend the lock. He's gonna fire control. Uh, hit crit. And two natural evades. All right, Vader, Vader. This is the Vader we get today for Michael. The Vader that will not take a single damage. And so that's why y'all can understand the frustration of players playing against uh, six, six health Vader when Vader is rolling paint the entire time. You just, it feels like a hopeless task. All right, so uh, it's a five to four as no ships were killed, but Michael retains his two crates. There were no crates for uh, Daniel that turn. So I'm wondering if a one bank from Merrick. If one bank, you can still grab a crate. Uh, he's probably too far away. Yeah. Vader could one straight, though, and grab crate and then chain chain actions. Um, the more I look at this, the more I wonder, like. It's really, it's risky though. You have a stunned pilot. Like you hit it, you're you're probably just dead. It doesn't look like that a straight would clear. So I think we're going to have to see a bank. You could, um, but what you could do is you could two bank, two bank roll with Mahler and then two bank with Stabber. And if you do that, you do block up Vader, um, unless Vader goes straight, which he could do. It's possible. Darth E. Vader. Nice. Daniel's still in a decent spot here. Shively climbing back. The other thing you could do is turn the boys in towards Merrick. Um, but you're going to need to make sure you block Vader so that you're not super vulnerable. You could... Um, oh, I don't know. Three, a three hard from Stabber looks a bit iffy. Might just be better to just keep threatening Vader, figure it out later.
All right, here we go. Round four coming up. Got a crit in there. So it is Michael, first player extraordinaire. That's actually really good for Tomax, guys. That's super good. <laughs> that really protects Tomax because I don't even think a three straight for America is going to get in lock range. I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but maybe you'll try it. The obsidian is just just cowardly running away. Vizier going to do the sloopy doop. Oh, yeah, you definitely got lock range there for sure. Single modded, but you do it. And he's slower, and I don't know if you have it, though. Three straight there from Mahler. And I think you just focus. Is that another friendly bump? It is another friendly bump. Takes the damage. So shield down, shield upgrade down on Merrick. Still a lot of health. Stabber turning away. Tomax is going to sit on the rock there. And uh, he just automatically takes the damage for some reason. But uh, that's a that's a debris. So you roll for it. I did roll for it. Oh, okay. That was just very fast. Then I'm sorry. <laughs> They're using the tinted dice, so I'm not. When I, if I'm not focusing clearly, I'm clearly missing it. All right, so so the debris lands a damage there on to uh, Tomax. Will not be shooting this turn. And Vader, interesting. Okay, don't know what Vader can do here. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. All right, so boy, Tomax is might die here. Very, very realistically, could be a dead Tomax. Otherwise, if he's if he survives, then hey, you get to drop an ion bomb. That's fun. So here we go, range one. Ouch. Two hits, two crits. Takes a hit, crit, crit. <sighs> Direct and a double direct. Okay, so super dead. This game is starting to slip here for Daniel. That turn and not being able to do any damage into into Vader was kind of the writing on the wall. I feel like in terms of just like the tone shift of the game. It's still it's only seven to five, but uh, I don't I don't see unless we get a really subpar roll here from the obsidian. Don't know if you can even get a, a crit through here. So uh, one becomes a crit, spend the lock. And hey, you do land one through. Did you was that an ion missile? Oh, okay. He didn't want the range bonus. Okay, that makes sense. So just the damage into the obsidian, no ion. So everybody's out of formation right now. The stabber facing the other way. Um, Mahler is near Vader, so at least he might be able to get an extra die. So nine to five. 
Stabber could uh, three hard and burners and grab a, a crate, which might be a good call. That would be his last afterburners charge. So planning for round five is about to commence. Merrick also for Skeppy, um, hoping to be able to contribute here soon. Hasn't um, been able to do anything quite yet. It feels if it, it, it you might be inclined to just go have like maybe like Mahler or Merrick go after Obsidian and like have Vader threaten everything else because it it turned going all in on a two point Obsidian carrying a crate just feels like a mistake. Um, you're just going to be pretty much per permanently out of position at that point. Uh, Vizier is probably going to try to meander and grab that bottom crate. Uh, Vader could grab one. All right, Daniel's first player. And taking it of eight again. Gonna coordinate Merrick or Vader. Not sure why you would coordinate Vader. He has all his. I mean, I guess you could barrel roll Vader. That would make sense, but. Target lock on backstabber. Okay. And link to a barrel roll with uh, his ability. Pretty good. So maybe seeing a 4k here. Actually, that would make the most sense at this point. Here comes backstabber. Gonna pop a burners. And uh, take a crate. There you go. So get back in the crate race. Game is not over. It's a four point game right now. Start scoring points in other ways. Waller here shooting over Vader. You could barrel roll to get your uh, Predator, but is it going to use Afterburners first? Nice, and I think you get that bullseye anyways when you focus. Let's see, do you? Yeah. Merrick. Merrick, you try to grab that crate. You get it. There you go. Now, now Daniel getting back in the crate race here. He's got two all of a sudden. But only one shot into the obsidian right now. So does that mean Vader's going to go after... Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so... so Shively's Merrick is just probably not going to do anything this game besides take crate points, which is good because he's four, as long as you get at least four points of salvage out of him, then that, that works. But uh, Vader's like, I got other plans. 
we're going to take a lock on to Merrick. Focus. With the ability there, spend that force to focus. Shively onto the rock! A talon roll hits the rock! Very surprising. You could still afterburners. Or has he used them? No, he hasn't used any of them? Okay. Not sure how much damage he's taken. He's, he takes a shield. Which gets him a force back. Oh, he's going to just stay on the rock. He's not even going to afterburners off of it, huh? Spin the lock. There you go. Hit, hit, crit in to Merrick. Trying to knock a crate off. Can you get some blanks in there? Gonna have to spend the focus, but no. So now range one, predator. There you go, spend for three. Into the two hole TIE Fighter, Palpatine not used yet. The pal pal so you got Force Evade here. And going to ha spend everything and not take any damage. Trying hard to kill that, at least knock a crate off. It's not happening right now. Next turn, though, you're going to have a lot of shots into. Uh... So Stabber's going to probably three bank and focus. Merrick is probably going to do a two bank or a two hard. And Mahler. Mahler could 3K. Should, that'll, that, that, would, that will fit. A little awkward here for Vader. I don't think the one bank is going to clear that rock. Get too hard and barrel roll. Ooh, I don't know. So 7-11. 7-11, folks. Grab your big gulps. Round six coming up. Plenty of time left in this game. Still about it's under 30 minutes. So the win condition for Shively, keep holding on to crates. Uh, keep Vizier alive. Keep uh, the, obs the Obsidian, I think you're willing to give up here. Daniel needs to start with the Obsidian, though. He needs to get those two points from the Obsidian and gets him up to nine. Fortunately, Vader's going to start trying to use Vader's five, gonna five straight and afterburners boost to try to catch Backstabber, who is on two hole. I am surprised, though, because he was still able to boost off that rock. It's not a perform action step thing, and but he didn't. Vizier is also in an awkward spot because the two bank, two banks going to hit the debris. You can't boost while you're stressed. The one bank is not looking very good either. Nico Saba, how's it going? Happy casual Sunday X-Wing day. Oh, um, yeah, Merrick really, really, really want, or Vader rather, really wants to fit that one bank, but it just won't fit. I just do not see it happening. Last turn, it would have been a good idea to probably barrel roll. He would have been able to fit that barrel roll. It gives him more room. We do have a game after this.
Oh, it does fit. Okay. Didn't think it would. How close was it, though? Literally as close as, as possible. It's in it. It's like clipping the base, right? Am I crazy, guys? Does it look like it's clipping the base? I know if like TCS doesn't say it. Yeah, it's totally clipping the base. Vader takes two. Here we go with that afterburners boost. Stay stressed, but we'll have a range two shot on to backstabber. Does Merrick even have a shot? Merrick does. Merrick does. Okay. So range two on a backstabber. Into a blank. Two crits. There's hope. There's hope for stabber. Gonna have to spend. Just one, unfortunately. And it gets enough. Merrick, range two. Comes a crit, you spend the lock. You need three. I mean, you really need three. You really need three. Hey, hit two crits. Can you get the obsidian out of here? Uh, has an evade and palp and doesn't take any damage. Hmm. Merrick, no shot. But here, I, I'm confused, guys. You're like, I know you're all like, check the chat log, but like when the, when the debris is in the base of the ship and it says it doesn't hit, I get I start to get really confused. It's like, look, it's literally clipping the base. Is that just like an error? Like, that's not what the edge of the debris actually looks like. It's not just a square cut edge or a straight line. It's weird. Well, yeah, well, I feel like that's not that's not cool. Like, why should it look off? Why would it why would it look different for anybody else? Like when we play this game in real life, it's a visual game. If it's like, oh, yeah, you're on the debris, you're on the debris, even if it's as close as it possibly could be. If you're on it, you're on it, you're off of it, you're off of it. So it's always weird when you get these weird discrepancies, like when the bullseye is clearly out, but it says it's in. <laughs> I don't even know what Vader does here. Just like three, I guess you can three, you just three bank. Does that hit the debris though? I don't think so. Three bank, hope that Merrick went fast enough you can arc dodge him, maybe? <laughs> Thank you. 
comes the obsidian, taking an evade. Vizier again in an awkward spot, but somehow is not going to hit that debris next turn. Watch. I guess the one hard would fit. Yeah, you, you could you could fit the one hard and you would be okay. Talon roll from Merrick. That makes sense. Five straight from Stabber. Focus, get your distance from Vader. One hard from Mauler and Barrel Rolling. Don't think you're going to get Bullseye still. You will not, but there you, there you go. You do get the extra die at least for Stabber from Stabber. First player was Daniel, but uh, Merrick will go first. Yeah, that will block the three bank. Yeah. At this point, is Vader just better off just trying to grab a crate? I just, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> Vader, two banks. I think he's only going to be able to lock one ship and it's going to be backstabber. Yep. <sighs> Range zero for nothing from uh, Skeppy's Vader. Now uh, range three into Backstabber from Shively's Vader. Oh, multiple blanks, multiple blanks. Target lock though, of course. Get another blank again. All right, just uh, just two. Gonna have to spend the focus, that's fine. You're not shooting anyways, so. Stabber sticking around on two hole. So now, so what we're going to need to get from Daniel is is natties from Mauler and blank skis from uh, the Obsidian. But this is first Merrick. He is going to throw in natty two hits. So maybe you can get a spend here of a token, a palp or an evade. One of them would be preferable. And you will see the evade get spent here. The evade is gone. Just Palpatine lives, uh, st sticks around here for the force... Uh, to lean on the force, get the side arc there. Mauler, range two. Hoping for the natty gods on your side. Shot in to the obsidian for just one. A blank out. No, two evades. Someday that obsidian will take a damage again. It has taken one. Uh, you got range zero. Two dice from Merrick into Vader for two. Vader taking nothing. And we are once again back to dials. 11 to 15. It's still a four point gap here. You really, Daniel really needs to knock a crate off and kill something to just get close. It's four points. I just, I just don't know how Vader is going to. It's tough, man. If Vader, so if, if Daniel's Vader runs away to grab a crate, good for you. You're getting extra point, but you're not like threatening anything. Um, so that's kind of been honestly, this is that's been one of the, the defining parts of this game is that Shively's Vader has been much more aggressive in, in having shots on target, range one shots, um, flanking where he is now. And Skeppy's Vader has just been in these awkward positions where he's he's run into his own friendly uh, in the first engagements. Um, he's, he's, he's ditched the boys, which is fine, but the boys have ditched each other. So everyone's split off and he's tried to go after the obsidian ionize it. Didn't do that. So turned in away from everyone else and shifted target priority, which was the right call towards Merrick and Vizier, but didn't barrel roll by this rock as we get a concession here. Um, 
didn't didn't barrel so should have barrel rolled here to have opened up a lane to either bank or straight but stayed here and that ended up clipping the rock staying on it taking damage tomax uh gave himself up uh to uh to vader going this way instead of that way would it have mattered as much if he went the other way i'm not sure he wouldn't have had a focus either way would have been getting shot at by a uh, double modded uh merrick and a unmodded vizier um so uh but yeah the just the tale of two different vaders this game one of them getting a lot more damage and then the other one of them more afforded to do so than the other one of them was getting blocked more than the other um that was that was definitely one of the one of the things All right. Uh, thanks for playing, man. Appreciate it. GG, sir. Yeah. I should have lost that game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the 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 tone, the, the way that the, the game whatever, shifted. Where I didn't take any damage like that. Yeah, was... I know. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I thought you played really well after Countdown died. I will say that um, the stuff that sucked was not the like. I just feel like even though it didn't really end up mattering because of where Vizier was the whole game, not not landing the plasma torp was wild. Like that just completely shifted the tone of the game because then he proceeded to not do a single damage for like three straight rounds. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and the uh, yeah, I messed up the like pre-positioning stuff that put countdown in in that spot. Um, plan wasn't for him to be there, but then I realized I was gonna bump into him and like, that is what it is. He played. Uh, I think he had a much better position early. For yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. I mean, it sucks because like your Vader, your well. So I mean, it sucks for him in the sense that like his Vader was it was just getting was getting blocked either by himself or you know by you and just not. And your Vader on the other side was doing a lot of damage, and that that also like when his Vader is just not contributing the same way yours is, like that you can carry the game and claw back and yeah with with yeah, that alone. That. that this BSA is scoring like six points just off of aid palp the whole time is really strong. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I know you built this for salvage and um, I'm so I have a question for you. I don't know if it would have mattered, but I do have a question. Um, actually, two things. One, because this is just silly. And it doesn't it actually doesn't matter at all. But like with Vizier here, like you didn't hit the debris, but like on my screen, the debris was inside your base. And I was I always gets confused when that happens. <laughs> I was like, yeah, did you I see that or no? I was I was planning on it for hitting. It's one of those things where um on different people's uh oh I actually wonder if was it not locked all the way down? Uh I actually I think it was. It would have had to be or else. Yeah, somebody um, Rob said that it looks the, different for different people. I'm like, that's so wild yeah, to me exactly. though. Like how? Yeah. Like how is that a thing? It's, <laughs> it's because like there are certain things that TTS renders on the server to my understanding I don't know anything about this actually and then there are other parts that render on your PC like on your computer that are done locally um, so that's like when you know there's a a waiting bar for it to like load in and stuff um, it'll I don't know. Sometimes it like looks different to different people. Cause like I've seen, I've had games where like, you know, I sent my opponent a screenshot of what an arc looked like on my screen, and he sent one that looks that's, <laughs> that's what it that's looks like wild. on his. That's and so it's just, wild. Like, barely, it's like a pixel or two difference. Yeah. But, like sometimes it's like, okay, on my screen it is clear. Like I can see a line of pixels in between the arc and that ship, but on his screen it's definitely just barely in and then it's like okay well there's like uh it, it goes off whatever the like dts server renders it I, I don't know how any of the background technology works but that's how it's been explained to me and mm, yeah it, yeah that, i just think I when stuff is more obvious on my end it's just so weird it's like it's like it would be yeah. difficult to try to like argue with the player like you go to the chat log obviously that's like what the rule has been for a long time but it's just such an awkward thing when someone's like but like but like it's in your base and you're like well not for me and then it's like well what like that's not how we play the game in real life like if you overlap something you do like it's yeah uh, we're, it's a visual well, game in that sense i I you can wiggle room it, but like if if it's like if yeah. you're on something, it's obvious because the, the 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 token or whatever you know the the game component is it moves. It's like it, yeah, you know, it's just that's just I, what it is. The way I I mean, like if it's close enough to be different between you and your 
opponent's like view of it, then it is going to be within physical wiggle room, I think. It's like, I, I, I hope, yeah. I, just, I guess it's hard it. for me to translate that into real life. It's just yeah. like mentally, I don't know how to, to um, yeah. Because then you just get like, so caught up in it. A tiny bit of give in between, like, it's not like your template actually snaps down, right? So if I'm playing on, right, all I have to do to make that fit or whatever is put the base or put the template so that it's hitting the right. Uh, yeah. The right, what are they, these things are called tab instead of the left one. And mm -hmm. then that's that's enough just barely to like make it pass through. But so I but have yeah. another question for and you. Was it was it just for getting afterburners? That was just me. No. Oh, so I was so okay. So actually, so I, I figured like I maybe you you forgot it or you just felt bad. I don't know. Like I, it's not a big no. deal. I was yeah. just I just the thought you were planning was... on doing the afterburners there and you did it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the plan was to do the afterburners when I did the whole coordinate double action right, thing. Right. And then once that happened, I just forgot. So, so you just didn't it. care about hitting the rock, essentially. It was that was all intentional, clearly. Because it was right in the middle of the rock. <laughs> it was not even close. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I was like, I'll just afterburners off of it. It's yeah. You were in I'm danger. Like, yeah. yeah. Um okay, really my question with the, with yeah, countdown, but... that first engage when you lost countdown. So you oh, no. you t use the ability on the plasma, and I'm qu wondering, is it because you did you for did you forget that the crit was canceled first? Because the next shot I thought was the one you were going to save your ability for, the one the range one from Mahler. The plasma plasma would have been two damage. That's all. Oh, I you just didn't. Okay, got it. I th I wasn't sure it's if it was like the crit side yeah. of it because I know you cancel that first. Okay, so it, it, it ultimately, I don't think the math is is that different. I'm just wondering if, like, if you were to do, have done it again, would you have saved the ability for the next shot, or do you think that was like just like? Uh, if I were to have done it again, I would have taken an evade instead of claiming because I'm not hanging on or they're like I'm in danger of sort of, of dying, not, and I'm probably gonna get the crate knocked off anyway. Yeah, smart thing would have been to take the evade, given all that had happened. I mean, I meant for countdown to be like over here instead i just yeah. messed up the coordinate okay. pre-positioning all that stuff um and yeah but given that he was where he was i should have taken an evade and just tried to survive um which probably would have meant well if i had the evade then i would have bounced the plasma in the first place um because i think i rolled like evade eye or whatever uh, uh you rolled a uh, blank know. blank blank eyeball um oh gotcha yeah, no, yeah I, so I was just wondering if it sort of, mattered. Yeah, I probably would have saved the ability until it guaranteed, like... Yeah, because the next two yeah, shots were four dice, range one. There probably would have mattered. Yeah. Range two, unobstructed yeah. bullseye for crack shot would have been the last shot. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I, my, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you still die there. I don't know. I think in that specific case, let's say you don't take the evade, you take the crate like you did. It, I just am curious, just from an educational standpoint, if it would have mattered or not. It, it, it seems like it's a toss up if it even matters. So yeah, yeah, I had, I had written countdown off at that point. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you you did a good job taking crates. It was it was interesting to see a very passive Merrick Steel kind of play. Where you just used his four points to just take, you know, the uh, just hold on to crates and go back and forth a little bit um yeah that wasn't the the original plan wasn't necessarily to do that i was planning on bringing him up like one of these two lanes once it mattered but it's when i lost countdown i was like okay i need to run away and yeah. try to make out points on crates um, yeah turns out that worked whether or not it should have <laughs> yeah so well you had everyone happen. split off in different ways so in different areas which made it harder for him yeah. for sure yeah. Yeah. The one like key piece that I guess really helps um, is that yeah the BSA really did the work, um, which is I, it's just such a good combo for salvage to have a palp carrier and then a two point nothing that can yeah. evade and it's like oh that's the thing I was like okay like I'll go over this way that that's why I did the four straight it was because I was trying to bait Vader to just come over and I knew it was gonna be a range three shot that turn and then he would have to spend another turn hunting me down in the corner. Yeah, but I think he did the right thing and was like, "Okay, I'm not gonna just commit Vader to this guy. I'll bring him over here because he had to kill something else." And then he yeah, other at least knock there. a crate off of something, right? Like, yeah. man, yeah. The I mean, the difference. That, yeah, just one shot or one quality shot at a time just wasn't enough to get through. No, palpade. 
Yeah. It's like I felt bad for when he had four shots into Vader and didn't do a single damage. That was that was yes, tough. That was that was that was you weren't even spending your tokens. You're like, I'll just sit here and roll natties every shot, which was like wild. Yep. Like that's where it yep. feels really unfair that there is a six health six point Vader when he just paints the whole time, just rolls natural evade. It's like, oh, it's tough. Oh, like, yeah. Why you even bother? <laughs> yep yeah, yeah and i think that the one or like he's his only danger right is the is the blank out because he doesn't have any way to mod blanks but yeah. which is why i think the only case you ever bring seven point vader is if you're working with debris gambit and like i guess debris gambit and pattern analyzer are the two yeah. things that these vaders don't have otherwise they're literally they're so good. Like, what is it? You can you can build this if, Vader on custom Vader without ion missiles. It's like what? Yeah, so. and also with if you do debris <laughs> gambit pattern, he like loses afterburners and shield, so it's like sucks yeah, so in that like, sense too. Yeah, thing to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, thanks for playing, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for talking through some yeah, of it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. Uh, talk to you soon.